I'm Dr. Anil Gudey, and I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery, and assisted conception at the Homerton Fertility Center in London. So today we take up a slightly different subject, and that is DNA fragmentation in sperm and its link to miscarriage. So this was a review and a systematic review done with a meta-analysis and published in July 2019. So where does it come up? A paper came up which showed a link between sperm DNA fragmentation and a sporadic miscarriage with a relative risk of 2.16. And that started the intense debate on whether sperm DNA fragmentation leads to miscarriage. Now, if you look at miscarriages, 40% of miscarriages have no answers. And one area that remains to be investigated is the role of sperm, or rather, let's say, it's sperm DNA fragmentation. So what are we trying to measure here? And we're trying to measure the percentage of sperm with DNA damage. So let's go back to sperm. And sperm DNA is highly compact, tightly packaged by proteins. Portions of DNA are located peripherally, and those are susceptible to oxidative damage and DNA fragmentation. Now, protein deficiency, reactive oxygen species, and failure to repair sperm has been associated with increased sperm DNA fragmentation rate. And that's how the entire story comes up. Now the question comes up is, can we assess this? So let's look at the number of tests available to assess sperm DNA fragmentation. You have inconsistency in types of tests and protocols of assessment. And the major assays include sperm chromatin structure assay, the tunnel assay, the SCD, which is sperm chromatin dispersion, and the comet test. And what the aim of this systematic review was to determine if there was a significant relationship between sperm DNA fragmentation and recurrent pregnancy loss. So if you have a look at the studies included, and they included six studies used the tunnel assay, six studies used the SCD, one used the comet assay, one used acridine orange, and one used aniline blue, Four studies used more than one method to detect DNA fragmentation, and eight studies used frozen sperm, seven studies used fresh sperm. So let's just have a look at the amount of mixture of, of tests that is involved. And they found a slightly higher DNA fragmentation in partners experiencing repeated pregnancy loss. But this statistical heterogeneity remained extremely high. Now, one of the things it has, it's very important to remember, is that the oocyte often repairs DNA fragmentation after fertilization. And that is one of the things which we have started learning. There's significant damage to sperm DNA and that it may not be repaired and that may convert to a poor blastocyst conversion. So what are the challenges you study? The multiple definitions for recurrent miscarriage and different workups. Multiple assays have been used to measure DNA with different sensitivities. Some studies have used fresh sperm, some studies have used frozen sperm. Frozen sperm itself can introduce sperm DNA fragmentation and the criteria of abstinence was entirely different. So four studies described subjects that excluded infertile subjects were 11 did not report on the fertility status with recurrent pregnancy loss. And some studies or have also shown an increased DNA fragmentation in the infertile population. So if you have a look at this entire review, it's, it clearly indicates that many of, uh, of the investigations have, have used different modalities and have different standards and have included different tests. So this system analysis suggests that there is some evidence that DNA fragmentation increase may be associated with recurrent miscarriage. But this does not associate to cause and should be related to clinical outcome. In fact, looking at the high heterogeneity of studies, there is, it is no doubt clear 
that we need more studies to, of, of using at least one type to look at the effect of sperm DNA fragmentation on miscarriages. And again, we come back to the role of antioxidants, microfluid sperm sorting, and testicular sperm, which again may have a role and would need to be investigated. Thank you very much. If you do like this talk, please share it and circulate it across. Thank you.